singing declarations of faith and truths about our God. And as we sing those declarations, we need to remember that those things aren't actually moving God or changing our circumstances or even changing the future. But what is actually happening is we are being encouraged and we are being renewed, as Paul says in Romans 12 too, being transformed by the renewal of our minds. So during this next time, as we sing these declarations, I pray that these things would encourage you, that these words would help to build your faith, and that we would be renewed from the inside out by our Holy Spirit. Let's sing, I will believe. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Sing Jesus. these declarations. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like
team taught us a new song called The Blessing. And it's straight out of, straight scripture out of the book of Numbers. And there's a section of that song that says that word, amen, amen. And, um, you know, sometimes when we pray, we say that at the end of our prayers, or even we sing it in songs, but we don't often think, what does that word amen actually mean? And amen really is just saying, yes, let it be. I'm in agreement with that. May it be so. And so at the end of your prayer, or whether it's in a song, it's just you coming into agreement with everything that's been prayed or everything that's been sung. So today, as we give our amen, we're gonna sing that song, The Blessing, here in just a minute. And as we do that, let's just offer our amen this Mother's Day weekend over ourselves, over our families as we receive this blessing.
as we sing amen today.
that you will be done. May your favor rest on us. Oh, let it be so. May your will be done. On our children, on our cities, our nation, and our world, may your favor fall, let your Holy Spirit fall, yes, we receive this blessing. Lord Jesus, we are. We come before you now, humbled and surrendered as your children and your servant. Lord God, we rest in your presence and your power. And we pray for blessing over our families, for future generations, over our cities, over our churches, our countries, our world, Lord God. We pray for blessing during this difficult time. We pray for you to change the circumstances in, in our lives, Lord God. We pray that you would change those circumstances for the future as a gift. But most of all, Lord God, we pray to come in alignment with your presence, Lord God, in alignment with your will, in alignment with your Holy Spirit. We pray that your kingdom come and that your will would be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everyone, welcome to Seacoast. My name is Lisa Surratt and I'm so happy to be here with all of you on this very special Mother's Day. I wanna say happy Mother's Day uh, to you and to all the mamas out there. And I know, I hope that you're celebrating with the special women in your life. And I wanna give a special shout out to my mom and to my mother-in-law, Miss Debbie. Happy Mother's Day to you too. You both are so special to us. And so take a moment and tag um, a special woman in your life in the chat. Uh, let's celebrate these wonderful women in our lives. You know, I know Mother's Day is represented by a lot of different emotions, both joy and sorrow. And I know there are many women who are in different stages of their journey, um, whether that's joy or grief. And so I wanna take a moment and I wanna honor you. We honor those who have given birth to a child and we celebrate with you. We honor those who have lost a child and we mourn with you. We will honor those who are in the trenches with littles and you've got the food stains on your shirt as a badge of honor and we appreciate you. We honor those who have lost through miscarriage, failed adoption or a wayward child and we hope for you. We honor those who have walked the hard path of infertility with pokes and prods and, and tears and disappointment. And we say we walk with you. We honor the foster moms, the mentor moms, the spiritual moms, and we need you. We honor those with a warm and close relationship with your children, and we're cheering with you. We honor those who have suffered disappointment and heartache and distance, and we're standing with you. We honor those who have lost their own mothers and we grieve with you. We honor those stepmoms and single moms. We're praying for you, we believe in you. We honor those who are soon to have an empty nest and some are jealous of you. We honor those who have adopted a child and we're grateful for you. We honor those who have placed a child up for adoption and we commend you. We honor those who are pregnant with new life and we anticipate with you. We honor those who have lived through medical tests and driving tests and the overall test of motherhood. And we honor you and we love you. And for those of you who never aspired to be a homeschool mom while working from home, providing endless snacks and cooking 17 times a day, this my friend is for you.
y'all about to make me lose my mind <laughs> up in here, up in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many of you mamas can relate to that, right? Seems like the longest summer ever. But you know, the question for this weekend that I want to take a look at is, what do you do when something you deeply care about is completely out of your control? This whole pandemic, right? We have never felt more out of control. I know some of you deeply care about the Gamecocks football and you were hoping for just a championship season one of these days, and yet you're watching Clemson again. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. Well, just to level the playing field, how many of you just wish you could just watch any sport of any kind (laughs) these days, right? But in all seriousness, maybe you have a crush. Maybe you have met somebody, and you just knew that they were supposed to be your spouse, but they didn't feel the same way. Or maybe you're dealing with a health crisis. Maybe, maybe you have walked the hard road of cancer and you're just hoping that it doesn't come back, but it's out of your control. And hello, parenting. I don't know about you mamas, but uh, there's probably never a season in my life that I have felt like I've had less control, right? But maybe that's just in my home. There's a funny story I want to share with you. It's a letter from a, a daughter to a mother And a mother passing by her daughter's bedroom was astonished to see the bed was nicely made. Everything was picked up. And then she saw an envelope propped up prominently on the center of her bed. It was addressed, Mom. With the worst premonition, she opened the envelope and read the letter with trembling hands. Dear Mom, it's with great regret and sorrow that I'm writing you. I had to elope with my new boyfriend because I wanted to avoid a scene with you and Dad. I've been finding real passion with Ted, and he's so nice, even with all his piercings, tattoos, beard, and his motorcycle clothes. But it's not only the passion, Mom, I'm pregnant. And Ted said that we're going to be really happy. He already owns a trailer in the woods and has plenty of, of firewood for the whole winter. He wants to have many more children with me, and now that's one of my dreams, too. Ted taught me that marijuana doesn't really hurt anyone and will be growing it for us and trading it with his friends for all the cocaine and ecstasy that we want. In the meantime, we'll pray that science will find a cure for COVID-19 so Ted can get better. He sure deserves it. Don't worry, Mom. I'm 15 years old now, and I know how to take care of myself. Someday, I'm sure we'll be back to visit so you can get to know your grandchildren. Your daughter, Judith. P.S. Mom, none of the above is true. It's, I'm over at the neighbor's house. I just wanted to remind you that there are worse things in life than my report card that is in my desk drawer. (laughs) Call me when it's safe to come home. (laughs) Would any of you parents agree? Parenting can make you feel crazy, a little out of control, right? You know, when I was a little girl, um, I always knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to go into medicine. I wanted to be a doctor or a nurse, and, um, and that dream stuck with me all the way through college. I was really focused and determined, and I worked my tail off to try to get there. And my junior year of college, I applied for PA school down at MUSC, and um, I wasn't really expecting to get in um, because I was a junior, but uh, that, that day came, and I got the call, and of course, I did not get in. And I was disappointed, but not, not terribly surprised. The next year, I just knew. I had gotten my name in the door, and I just knew I was going to get in. So I worked really hard, and um, the day came, and I did not get in again. And I remember feeling just so disappointed. Everything that I had been working on, my dreams, had just been just shattered. The, The one door that I had spent my whole life knocking on slammed shut. Do you know that feeling? Today, we're going to look at a story in the Bible of a woman that I'm guessing most of you have probably never heard of. Her name is Yocheved. Say it with me. Yocheved. Okay, so now I'm sure somebody's correcting me in the chat right now, but you can give me a little grace now that you see how hard, it's, how hard it is to say. Well, Yocheved's story is relevant to each one of us especially during this pandemic. Most of you have heard of her son, Moses. 
Uh, he was actually one of the superstars of the Bible. But did you know that it was the heroic actions of his mother when he was three months old that led to him becoming the man that we read about today? Take a look at the story, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. A man from the family of Levi married a Levite woman. The woman became pregnant and had a son. She saw that there was something special about him, and she hid him. She hid him for three months. When she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket boat made of papyrus. She waterproofed it with tar and pitch and placed the child in it. Then she set it afloat in the reeds at the edge of the Nile. So here she is. She has this baby boy at the most inconvenient time in human history. She's living as a slave, and the Hebrew slaves began to outnumber the Egyptians. So Pharaoh, the king of the Egyptians, he's made a decree that every baby boy be thrown into the Nile River. I mean, can you imagine? That kind of puts our problems in perspective, doesn't it? Every baby thrown into the Nile. I can't imagine the turmoil as a mother that she faced during that three months. I'm sure that she imagined every possibility. I'm sure she thought about running away or, or trying to hide him. But she was in a situation that she could not control. So what do we do with cares that we can't control? First, when we can't control our cares, we need to cast them cast them. What does that mean? You might know what I mean when I say you want to cast a net or cast a fishing pole or cast a part in a play. Um, But what does it mean to cast your cares? Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. We've got to give it to God. He will take care of you. 1 Peter 5 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, casting all of your cares, that's all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all, on Him. And He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Here's the thing. What casting your care doesn't mean is giving up. She didn't just give up and say, I guess the baby won't live. She did what was in her control and trusted God to do what was out of her control. We can all relate to this, right? Can all other mamas say homeschool? (laughs) This story is not just for moms, though. Some of us today are facing situations and cares that are weighing really heavy on you. I know some of you are facing medical diagnosis, Maybe you're facing a marriage challenge that just has not let up and you don't know what to do. Maybe you're a business owner and this whole pandemic has cost you dearly and you're at the end of your rope trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Maybe it's a sin that you're struggling with or a financial problem. And just like the baby, it's grown too big and too loud to hide anymore. Friends, It's time we have to cast your care. Sometimes the only way God can show us that he's in control is to put us in situations we can't control. No one likes to be out of control. I know I hate it. But here's the thing. Anything that's under God's control is never really out of control. We've got to trust him. The Bible says that Yochaved had faith and was unafraid. How? How? How do you face a situation like that? Like being forced to throw your child into the river to drown. How do you face that with such faith? I believe she chose to cast her care instead of trying to control it. Okay, let's get practical. How did she do it? Like, how did she physically do it? Let's take a look. Exodus 2 verse 3 says, When she couldn't hide him any longer, she got a little basket, and she made a basket boat out of papyrus. She waterproofed it with pitch and tar and placed the child in it. So she built this basket boat. And what is so interesting to me is that the word, the Hebrew word that they use for basket boat 
is also the same word um, in the story of Noah, the ark. So teva is the Hebrew word, and it means both basket boat and ark. And in those days, an ark was built to house something precious, to, to protect something, to keep it from harm. So she created this purposeful vessel that would carry her child upright and protected because he was precious. And don't you believe that the things that are precious to us are precious to God? You know, although Yochaved could not control the situation around Moses, she could build something to carry him through it. Verse 3 says she used papyrus. Papyrus is a reed that was found at the edge of the Nile River, and it has floating properties. For us, I think that this represents God's promises. God's promises will carry us through. Dig into his word time and time and time again. He was faithful. You can stand on God's promises. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, I don't think the way that you think. The, The way you work isn't the way I work. God's decree. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Just as rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry, so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. They will do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. My friends, you can trust God's promises. The second thing that she used was pitch. Pitch was like tar. It was a sticky substance that was used to to cover boats, to waterproof them. And if there is nothing more that we need is that covering, that covering of prayer, right? Philippians 4 Verse six through seven says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout the day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Christ Jesus. Your faith filled request. Tell him every detail of your life. He wants to know. He already knows. He just wants you to talk to him about it. You know, have you ever had that happen where you you bring something to God, you pray about something, and then all of a sudden the answer comes? If you haven't, I encourage you to give it a try. There's power in prayer. Lastly, Yochaved takes this basket boat, this ark, that is, that is a protection vessel for her child. She puts her child in it, and then she does the hardest part, right? The hardest part was actually putting it in the water and letting it go. She did all that she could do, and now the time has come. This is where the rubber meets the road in her faith. Is she going to trust God to do what she can't do? You know, if you are struggling with something, let me ask you, have you taken time to open your Bible, to be reminded of God's promises, to be reminded of his faithfulness? Have you covered it in prayer? Where do you need to surrender and release control to God? If Yochaved had built the basket, put the baby in it, and never released it into the water, she would have missed the miracle that God wanted to do. You see, the miracle began with her surrender. Look at what happens next. Exodus 2 verses 5 through 10 says, The baby's older sister found herself a vantage point a little way off and watched to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the Nile to bathe. Her maiden strolled on the bank. She saw the basket boat floating in the reeds and sent her maid to get it. She opened it and saw the child, a baby crying. Her heart went out to him. She said, this must be one of the Hebrew babies. Then his sister was before her. Do you want me to go and get a nursing mother from the Hebrews so that she can nurse the baby for you? Pharaoh's daughter said, yes, go. The girl went and called the child's mother. 
Pharaoh's daughter told her, Take this baby and nurse him for me. I'll pay you. The woman took the child and nursed him. After the child was weaned, she presented him to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son. She named him Moses, which means pulled out, saying, I pulled him out of the water. What do we do when we can't control our cares? First, we have to cast them. Second, we have to look for help from the people God has put around us. Look for help. God has been strategic about putting people around you. It's not by accident. You were born in this time, in this season. He already knew the challenges that you would be facing long before this day ever came. He knew the situation that she was facing. And she, she found herself cross, crossing paths with some expected help and some unexpected help. First, she had Miriam, who was her daughter, and of course, the baby's sister. And so she desperately cared about what happened to this little baby. So she was bold. She went and hid, and she saw she wanted to watch the baby. And then she was strategic, and she jumped in. And she said, hey, I can help. Do you want me to go and get a nursing mom for you? Then Pharaoh's daughter, totally unexpected, right? We don't even know if she believed in God. What's so interesting about this is, is God can use anybody. God can use anybody. It was her compassion that played such a huge part in this story. God used those around Yochaved, even the most unexpected people as integral parts of Moses' rescue plan. You know, so often I try to solve problems in my life with just me and God, when all along God is just sending people, right? It wasn't just a yoke of ed and, and a God thing. He used others around her as part of his plan. You know, you've probably heard that silly uh, story about the man who was standing on the roof during a flood, and he, um, he's, as he's watching the waters rise, he, he's praying to God, God, rescue me. So a helicopter comes, and he says, no, 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 my God is going to rescue me. I don't need your help. Then a boat comes by, the waters continue to rise, and he says, no, 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 God, my God's going to rescue me. Soon the waters are up around his waist, and the helicopter comes back, and he says, hey, now's the time. No, 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 my God is going to rescue me. So he drowns and he gets to heaven and he walks through the gates and he says, St. Peter, I don't understand. I, I'm a faithful man. I trusted you to save me. And St. Peter said, well, God sent a helicopter, a boat, and then another helicopter, and you didn't take any of them, right? It's such a silly story, but don't we do that so often? You know, as a mom as a leader, so many times we need help, but we want to look like we've got it all together, right? God has strategically put people around you for to help you. And so I want to encourage you, um, reach out. Reach out and, and, and allow God to use those people in your life. If you need people, I want to encourage you, get involved in a small group. We have a thousand different ways to connect um, here at Seacoast. And we have Sisterhood coming up on May 13th. You can watch it on Instagram Live, Facebook Live. Hopefully, we'll be back meeting um, again in person soon. Um, but I want to encourage you. It's a great place to get connected. It's a great place to find a small group. We have men's ministry. Same thing. We love to connect men into a small group. Do life together. Life was never meant to be done alone. You know, um, you may not be in a situation where you are the one needing the help, but God may want to use you to be the help that others are praying for. And I want to encourage you. We have a Dream Center. We have an E3 mentoring program. There are kids that desperately need your help. They need your wisdom. They just need you to be a friend. Some of you are called to be foster parents. I think about my friend Lynn and, and how she chose to be a foster parent. And I just want to say... What you do is amazing. 
as a foster parent. You come in for a season and you do what birth parents can't do. You leave an imprint of God's love on, on them for the years to come. I think about, um, I had an opportunity to work for a nonprofit um, that fights human trafficking and so many of the girls struggle with addiction. And I think about how um, there were things that I couldn't do to help those girls get out of addiction. But let me tell you, those who had walked through addiction, those who had, had been, their stories had been redeemed and they found freedom, it was those people who helped those girls walk through and find freedom also. No story is too far gone for God to redeem. Allow him to use the other people in your life or perhaps you as part of his rescue plan. You know, I think about so many times we feel shame. We feel like our story disqualifies us, but more likely our story of redemption is what qualifies us, right? So where do you need to ask for help? Where do you need to be the help someone is praying for? For some of you, the most significant action that you're going to take from this message is just to reach out. So when we can't control our cares, first, we have to cast them. Second, we have to look for help from those people God has put around you. And the last part, this is my favorite part of the story, is watch God have the last word. Watch God have the last word. Let's go back to the story. So, Yochaven. She's a slave woman. When we meet her, she is in a situation that seems unfathomable. She's forced to throw her baby into the river. So what does she do? She builds an ark. She casts her care. She releases it into the river. Then she allows other people to be part of the rescue plan. But the story gets better. Pharaoh's daughter then comes. She, she adopts the boy into her home. And she asked, is there any nursing mothers that could feed him? Hey, hey, pick me. <laughs> pick me, right? So she gets her child back. And that would be enough for most of us. But it gets better in that Pharaoh decides to pay her to do that. So now she's getting a paycheck to do the thing that she would have paid any amount of money to be able to do. That's incredible. But wait, it gets better. I feel like I'm on an info marshal. <laughs> The boy that Pharaoh adopts, and he resources him in his own home, and he grows up to become the person that would deliver not only his family, but the entire nation of Israel. My friend, God always gets the last word. When we surrender something that is precious to us, he often will return it, and then some. God returned the baby with a paycheck and a purpose. Whatever you're struggling to control, just release it to God. Do what you can do. Cover it in prayer and remind yourself of his promises. Yochaved's courageous decision to release her control to God had a ripple effect for generations to come. I want you to think about this. The best she could do on her own, Moses doesn't die. The best God can do, Moses is returned. The best she could do, Yochabed lives as a slave. The best that God could do is that Yochabed is paid to nurse her own baby. The best that she could do, Moses lives as a slave. The best God could do, Moses lives in a kingdom, earning favor with the king, and then becomes the one God uses to deliver the nation of Israel. Incredible. And I want to tell you, the same can be true for you. God can work in whatever situation that you're going through. I believe with all my heart, Romans 8, 28, he works all things together for the good of those who love him according to his purpose. Going back to my story of, of getting into PA school, you know, third time's a charm. <laughs> I finally got into PA school. I almost didn't apply. I, uh, it was the day before the application was due, and I had decided to go in a different direction. But God stirred in my heart, and I knew that, that he had put that dream in my heart. So I got my master's degree in physician assistant studies, and, but I want to tell you, it wasn't really the PA degree that changed my life. The degree I got surrendering my babies to God 
when I couldn't control them has served me far more in life than any PA degree could. So what about you? What step do you need to take right now in surrendering your cares to God? For some of you, it looks like surrendering your life to Jesus. Maybe you've been trying to do it all on your own. And just like Yokoved, what she did, what she realized is that what her best was could only take her so far. But what God's best was rippled into the generations to come. His best is far better than what we could ever do. So I wanna encourage you, will you trust Him with your life? Will you ask Him, just pray this simple prayer and ask Him, tell Him just, I surrender my life to you. I wanna trust you, I wanna walk with you. I wanna believe that your plans are better than my plans. So would you pray with me, Father, we come before you. I just ask, Father, that um, those who are, are needing to surrender their lives, God, you'd give them courage. And if that's you, just pray this prayer. I surrender my life to you, Father. Would you come into my life? Would you change my life? I trust that, that Jesus is who he said he was. He died on a cross um, for me, for my sins, so that I would not have to pay the price. And so, Father, I ask, Lord, that you change my life, that you would lead me, that you would guide me, that you would bring people along the way to help me in my new journey of faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. If that's you, I just want to say you have a brand new life that is starting. And for those of you who have things that you need to surrender, maybe you've been wrestling with something that you care deeply about. Would you ask for help? Would you reach out right now in the, in the chat? You can just reach out and say, hey, I would love to talk to someone about something I'm going through. And we would love to help you walk through that. Or maybe you find yourself in a position to help. And I just wanna encourage you to raise your hand or look for, ask God. Ask God to allow His Holy Spirit to bring divine appointments in your life. Ask Him to use you. He has a plan and a purpose for you, bigger than you ever imagined. And so look for those divine appointments. Be bold, be brave. Pray for somebody, uh, serve somebody. He wants to use you. We're gonna do response time right in your living room. And so now's the time. You know, we joke about getting out the, the Oreos and the milk, but come on somebody, I'm a sucker for some Oreos and milk. <laughs> but you can use bread and juice or whatever you like. And just take time to remember what Jesus did for you. His body was broken, His blood was shed for you and for me. And we're so grateful. And that time of communion is just to, to pause and remember what He did. Others, others of us will, will take time to, to light a candle and lift somebody up and pray for someone. And I wanna encourage you, we have um, hosts in the chat. Again, if, if you do need prayer, just reach out, just ask for prayer and our team would love to pray for you. Uh, you can also get out a sheet of paper or a journal. I love to journal and just write down, what is God saying to you? What are you gonna do about it? Write down the things that He is asking you to surrender. And others of us are gonna give. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. God has called us to be a part of something that He's doing and your giving helps make it happen. And so I wanna say thank you for your giving. Let's respond to God. Yeah. 